Hello everyone. I've uploaded an updated version of the JB Hi-Fi spreadsheet onto our team site, but I just wanted to show you how I got everything that's been changed. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try and decompose the income statement into operating and financing activities. And if you've had a look through the Unit 5 materials, you'll understand why, that sometimes separating out our operating and financing activities can be useful. So I'm gonna scroll down here and I'm going to calculate pre-tax income, I'm going to get from the fact set data. Income tax expense from the fact set data. Net profit after tax is already in the fact set data. I'm then going to work out what my net interest expense after tax is, and you can see the calculation for that down below. From that, I can then work out what net operating profit after tax must have been. So in effect, I'm going to allocate the income tax expense across operating and the financing or the net income components. So let's see how we do this. So the pre-tax income, I'm already going to get uh, pre-tax income in the first year, 19.7. The income tax expense, I'll scroll back up, that's our income tax number here in row 30. I could either get the number from fact set or check it. So I've got pre-tax income, less income tax expense, gets net profit after tax. And that 13.8 is what we can see up in row 35. I'm then going to calculate net interest expense after tax. I'm gonna do that as follows. Interest expense, we know. The interest expense, when I scroll up, uh, I'm going to find that as 3.1. I'm going to subtract from that interest or financing income, and that is going to be 0.4. Okay, so I've now got my net interest expense. So interest expense less interest income. So that's our 2.7. I'm then going to work out, I need to work out the after-tax value of that. So to do that, I need the effective tax rate. So the effective tax rate is going to be the income tax expense divided by pre-tax income. Now, when I calculate this number, I just want to sense check it. It's come out as 29.9%. It might come out as a number for you as a decimal, in which case you just want to hit this percentage uh, up the top here in terms of the formatting. Format as a percentage is just nicer. 29.9 makes me comfortable because I know that JB Hi-Fi is likely to be paying over time the average corporate tax rate of 30%, or well, that's what the average corporate tax rate was. So seeing that 29.9% says that they're effective tax rate is close to the average tax rate. So I now want the after tax value of the net interest expense. So net interest expense multiplied by one minus that after tax tax rate. I'll close the brackets and I'll hit enter and we get 1.89. That's the figure that I'll now put here. 1.89 is my net interest expense after tax. So my net operating profit after tax is going to be the net profit after tax, and I'm now going to add the net interest expense after that because the operating profit, let me just reduce some decimal places here, which I'm hoping is what's going on. Here we go, 15.7, I probably don't need more than two decimal places at this point. So I've allocated the net profit after tax across the net interest expense after tax and the net operating profit after tax. Okay, now I'm going to copy all of these cells, all of these cells across. I'm gonna click on the bottom right hand here, drag this across and there we have a decomposed or recast income statement separating out income into its operating and its financing components. So when we start looking at margins, this is one of the ways that we can, we can use to, to analyze the company. 
So now I'll turn to the balance sheet and I'll do the same thing. I want to recast the balance sheet into its operating and financing components. So the first thing I want is working capital. So the current operating assets less current operating liabilities. So to do that, I'll take total current assets and I'll subtract from that the cash and the short term investments. And then from that, I'm going to subtract the total current liabilities less the short term debt because that's going to be a financing component. So that's going to get my operating working capital. I then want my net long term operating assets. So let me just pop in net long term because I'm going to be subtracting the long term operating liabilities. So what have we got here? We've got property, plant and equipment. We've got long term investments. We've got intangible assets and we've got deferred tax assets and other assets. From that, we're going to subtract the long-term liabilities that aren't debt. So the provisions, I'm going to subtract the deferred tax liabilities, I'm going to subtract other liabilities, and that's going to give me my net long-term operating assets. I'll add those two things together and that gets my net operating assets for the year. So the balance sheet needs to balance. We're just pushing the balance sheet around. So to get net debt, I'm going to get short-term debt plus long-term debt, short-term debt plus long-term debt, and I'm going to subtract my cash and investments to get my net debt. I'm then going to get total shareholders' equity, total shareholders equity and that's going to be my net capital and what I'm looking for is for that number to exactly balance the net operating assets again we're just pushing around the balance sheet into a different format but the resources that the firm has the net operating assets has to be funded by net debt or equity that is our net capital so each year we want to make sure that net operating assets equals net capital Finally, I'm going to go and calculate some variables that I know I'm going to need for my performance analysis. So here we go. Sales is just going to be my revenue from the income statement. So let's scroll up and get the sales figure. Um, net income is the net income figure that we've been using or calculating. Uh, the average value of shareholders' equity. I'm not going to be able to get for 2004 um, because we're going to be missing that. So I can calculate that starting 2005. It's going to be 2004 shareholders' equity plus 2005 shareholders' equity multiplied by 0.2. Sorry, multiplied by 0.5 or divide by 0.2. Uh, I can do average total assets and again from the balance sheet. It's start of year assets plus end of year assets divided by 2 plus multiply by 0.5 or divide by 2, whichever you prefer. Net operating profit after tax is the number that we calculated. And again, I need to take the 2005 number. Average net operating assets is going to be from the balance sheet, net operating assets 2004 plus net operating assets 2005, and I'm going to average that. Gross income, I'm going to get from the income statement, and gross income, again taking that from 2005. Average operating working capital, we start getting the hang of this hopefully, operating working capital, start of year, end of year, multiply by 0.5. I'm going to take average accounts receivables. So I'm going to go back to the balance sheet, average accounts receivable, and I want receivables plus receivables, multiply by 0.5. I'm going to take cost of goods sold, because that's going to be important for some of the ratios that we're calculating, and make sure I take the right year, cost of goods sold. I'm going to take average inventory. Start of year inventory, 
end of year inventory multiplied by 0.5. I'll take average accounts payables because that's going to be important when we're looking at uh, our accounts payables, average uh, end of year times 0.5. That'll be important when we're looking at working capital. Average current assets I'll take. Start of year plus end of year. Let's not forget to enclose that in a brackets. Multiply by 0.5. I'll take average current liabilities. Same thing. Again, I might be interested in looking at working capital and operating working capital separately. So I'll get both the current liabilities and, uh, and the working capital. I'll now take cash and receivables. Uh, and again, I may be interested in ratios that are based off cash and receivables. So let's take cash and receivables plus cash plus receivables all multiplied by 0.5. And let's just take average cash. Um, again, I will go cash plus cash. Again, it doesn't matter if you divide by two or multiply by 0.5. From the cash flow statement, I'm gonna take operating cash flow. So net cash flow from operating activities, that's the number I want here. Average net debt, go back to our balance sheet, I've got study year net debt, end of year net debt, multiply by 0.5. I'll take my interest expense, back to my income statement, interest expense. I'll take my tax expense from the income statement. And again, what I'm trying to do here is just get all of the variables that I might need into one uh, one worksheet here and I now want the dividends paid from the cash flow statement so I'm going to be looking at cash dividends paid there we go I've now got all of the variables that I want I'm just going to click and drag that across and now I've got the set of variables that I'm going to need to try and do some analysis with